Все, поехали. А я не вижу, что запись идет. Рассказывай. Красная точка горит в верхнем углу. Okay, так, ну сегодня start. у нас Сергей Петрович Сарев рассказывает, ему передаю я okay, все права. Thanks, Thank you very much for this possibility to give one more presentation of quite new but very simple technology. I did expose it several times in Russian, several times in Russian, but this should be an English language position. It will be somehow an informal continuation of my previous talk about polynomial filters and uh, boundary effects of polynomial filters. So the topics to be discussed are the following. Certainly we will find We'll solve the main problem of this talk, how to find a position, precise position of some navigation satellite at some particular time, provided we are given just two points of its trajectory. And we want to restore the complete trajectory between two points with high precision. So the standard problem of interpolation. Uh, the obvious and very practical in a sense uh, solution is just try to solve the respective uh, dynamical system. So model all necessary forces acting on the satellite, all uh, additional effects, etc., and solve the two bow point boundary value problem. But in fact, in this particular situation, it's quite difficult due to the fact that uh, uh, the models of forces are quite complicated. And also, as rotation is not that trivial when you come to the necessary precision. Sorry, guys, uh, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Anyone yes. Present? Yes. Sorry. Okay. Because uh, I see only my screen. Good. So this is a practical but quite complicated solution. And we propose a new, very simple and uh, very easy and very fast method based on linear and nonlinear machine learning approach. Using this method, we overcome this problem of boundary attenuation exposed in my previous talk. Uh, in my previous talk, I uh, tried to find defects, outliers, uh, jumps in published trajectories of uh, navigation satellites. And unfortunately, we see that all linear uh, filters which, were, which we were able to construct have some boundary effect, which prevents us to see such outliers and such defects near boundaries. <clears throat> then we briefly, if time permits, extend our interpolation methodology from dynamical systems. So one parametric uh, trajectory is two, multi-parametric continuum medium and other phenomena. We'll try to model ionospheric delays for navigation signals. Then a few words about possible methodological interpretation of our approach and some problems of big data in machine learning will be briefly mentioned. Uh, so all such topics will be given in the following way. First, we'll give a simple, the simplest possible example of new methodology, which we call free interpolation. Namely, we interpolate the tra trajectories of GLONASS and GPS satellites with high precision. So what is the difficulty of calculating the orbit with the necessary accuracy? Uh, what are input data to be used in such calculations? Can we get precise trajectories from somewhere? In fact, uh, standard recommendations and quite good recommendation I use the standard classical polynomial Lagrange interpolation. We will discuss differences, positive and negative effects, and compare accuracy of classical Lagrangian polynomial interpolation and our new free interpolation technology. Then we will move much further to nonlinear free interpolation, and we will solve the problem of uh, two point boundary problem for this dynamical system, namely, given two points of the trajectory, restore all, all positions of the satellites in between using very simple, simple, uh, avoiding solving ODE approach. So, uh, using this machine learning approach, we will show how to overcome this boundary attenuation effect of polynomial filters. 
uh, then we will come into more philosophical, I would say very quite deep problem of machine learning. If we speak about free interpolation, but still we impose some uh, form of interpolation, namely polynomial form. Why we are so restricted and why we can't we cannot make absolutely free interpolation model. There, then uh, the second main problem of big data come into play. Certainly we all understand the first main problem of big data, namely there are many of them, right? Megabytes, terabytes, and petabytes. But the second main problem of big data is the fact, which we will see quite easily, that they are in fact very scarce. There are too few of data in such terabytes because in multidimensional case, and we are in multidimensional case, as we will see, number of data which one would need mathematically in a simple mathematical model of free, absolutely free interpolation would be enormous, not petabytes and not exabytes, but very, very high volumes of information if we will follow a naive approach. Also, some methodological aspect will be exposed. <clears throat> Namely, uh, it's possible to say that this free interpolation is nothing but the classical linear and non-linear regression, known, very well known in data processing, in statistics, etc., etc. Well, we will discuss if this is true. And finally, we will try to generalize our ideas to the multidimensional case of continuous media. Good. <clears throat> As I told, the main object of our study today will be trajectories of navigation satellites of both wide well-known system GLONASS, GPS, and finally, no difference with Beidou, Chinese system, or European Galileo. Uh, formally, I would say, as it would be ideally, if they will ideally exist, the nominal tra trajectories of GPS satellites will be just circular orbits with uh, quite big radius, 26,000 kilometers and more than 26,000 kilometers from the center of the Earth. So quite large, but not as big as geostationary. Geostationary orbit is 41 and something thousand kilometers from the center of the Earth. And uh, for GLONASS uh, trajectories, it's practically the same. Also circular orbits, a bit smaller period because the radius is a bit smaller. And inclination, by the way, of trajectories to the equator is different, a little bit. But reality is much more complicated. Orbits of all satellites are, in fact, cannot be circular. Even uh, if we will approximate them by elliptic capillary orbits, then we will have varying eccentricity. Dynamics of spacecraft is uh, affected by very complicated complicated forces, so deviation from ideal circle or even ideal elliptical uh, orbit will be several, several kilometers in the minimum. There is no possibility to have high precision and even modest precision navigation using these simple circular and elliptic trajectories. <clears throat> Let's have a brief look at the satellite dynamics, namely for navigation satellites on quite high trajectories, more than 20,000 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. So <clears throat> the first line in this table uh, just exposes the main central gravity force of the Earth in the ideal uh, setting when the Earth is just an ideal ball. But in fact, the Earth is not an ideal ball. It's more like it's ellipsoidal body. So this is called, uh, this difference in gravity force called second zonal harmonics. It's quite big. It's not, well, absolutely big. But it affects, the, in the last column, we will see the effects of such perturbations. Namely, the perturbation in one hour of flight, of 12 hour period, or in, in only one hour, this uh, non-sphericity uh, non of the Earth results in very big deviation in 300 meters from an ideal orbit. Also, Obviously, tidal forces from moon and sun result in quite large variations of the orbit, 40 meters for one hour and 20 meters one hour, respectively. Also, higher order harmonics of the Earth gravity 
called fourth zonal harmonics and gravity anomalies result in quite a few centimeters, 60, 60 centimeters deviation from some, some ideal orbit. The line solar, solar radiation refers to the light pressure. Certainly it's very small in our usual human interpretation. But in space, when there is no other forces and the flight is free and the sun is shining always, we will see that for one hour flight, we will have almost 60 centimeters of perturbation, relative naive approach. And all the other anomalies also uh, have quite serious influence. Right. Uh, Let's go ahead. So reality is complicated, but what about possibility to obtain such information? What is the standard accurate information about real orbits? Yes, it's possible to obtain such information and uh, it comes regularly in open uh, uh, archives uh, and they're just usual text files called sp3. Uh, files for all GPS, GLONASS, Beidou, and uh, other satellites. Every day with the 15 minutes time steps, coordinates of the of every satellite is given with quite high precision, namely claimed accuracy, so deviation of some real, what is reality is difficult to say, but it's about around three centimeters. And an obvious question asks is possible to ask, is it an excessive precision, three centimeters, when we have so complicated forces. And in fact, is it really needed? Uh, I will give just a screenshot of a very old paper <coughs> published in Geophysical Research Letters in 99, is 19, so 20 years ago. It says that it's possible to use GPS navigation for geodesical surveying, so very precise positioning of your uh, receiver with one millimeter precision. Okay, it's a good paper, old paper, uh, but it's very instructive to look into the table on the last page of this paper. So we see the table. The first column is a date of methodology applied. And the second is just precision. They uh, are interested in vertical precision, in displacement somewhere in California. They will try to monitor movement of the earth uh, just to monitor uh, dangers of earthquakes. So the vertical uh, precision of measurement is very crucial. So even 40 years ago, almost 40 years ago, in 1983, the vertical precision using advanced receivers was very, 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 uh, good antenna with very good uh, data processing, it was possible to obtain precision 12 millimeters. Then in 10 years, almost two and a half millimeter, then suddenly five. And the current uh, research is reporting precision of almost one millimeter. What happens between 92 and 95? Let's look <coughs> uh, the last column and we'll see the number of solution days. This means that to obtain such a precision for geodetic application, for other applications, for example, uh, quite popular now uh, uh, autonomous vehicles for uh, precision agriculture uh, with robots for other, other uh, uh, purposes, we need not to measure once as we do in our uh, navigation devices. We need to accumulate information for a number of consecutive days from a receiver which is stationary established, say for three days or 19 days or five days, or in uh, that period in 1999 for 11 days, accumulating such information, processing it. It's possible to obtain precision of one millimeter. So uh, claimed precision in three centimeters is even not enough. Good. So <clears throat> we understand that the targeted precision millimeter, one millimeter or better, is quite high. How can it be achieved? Uh, the uh, data, the input data, as I told you, are tabulated X, Y, and Z coordinates of the satellite 
with a time step 15 minutes. How can we obtain positions between such uh, quite large step? Then try to use the usual polynomial Lagrange interpolation. It's a standard recommended, officially recommended technology. So you can see formula ones, which is standard formula for Lagrange interpolation. TIs are the points with, that, with this 15 minutes time step when we know positions of the satellite. <clears throat> T hat is nothing but the target point when we want to find this uh, position of the satellite. And we, with this simple formula, you obtain the result. <clears throat> Similar formulas can be given for trigonometric and other interpolation methods. What is new in our approach? And we call it free interpolation. Namely, let's look at the functions alpha i's of t hat. They depend certainly also on ti, but the main dependency is on the target position t hat. And suppose that we do not fix them here to be polynomial, it's polynomial in t hat in Lagrange approach, but it, or it's trigonometric in other approaches. <clears throat> but let's take a free form function, no limitation on the explicit or implicit form of this function. So they are absolutely free. That's what we call it free interpolation. Obviously, it seems to be strange. How can one find, instead of one function f, which is, suppose, it's known. We have a number n functions which are unknown, and we cannot, from this simple equation, fix such functions. No, it's possible. Make a simple trick, which will result in a great uh, accuracy increase, namely, with these simple tricks, we take 100 more accurate results. And the trick is very simple. Let's fix t hat. What do I mean by fix t hat? How we do it? Uh, first, formally introduce a new definition, which I call very simple, interpolation pattern. Let's fix on the time axis <clears throat> the moments ti where the uh, function is given the nodes of interpolation, and nodes of them with 15 minutes time step, and the position of the target point t hat with respect to these points, with points when we have sp3 data. Uh, the picture is as follows. It's a part of, well, formal trajectory of our satellites, and uh, y circles are known positions of the satellites on the tra trajectory, I took six of them, and by the way, 15 minutes time step between <clears throat> consecutive points corresponds to approximately 3,500 kilometers between them. And the target point in black circle is somewhere in the middle, suppose, here. But it's not the interpolation pattern. It's just a geometrical picture of trajectory. And the interpolation pattern is formally just very simple. On the time axis, I fix only such round black, uh, round white circles or crossed circles, the uh, interpolation nodes, and the black circle, the target points. Here we see that we have actually extrapolation. Six points from zero to five, and one more point when we want to obtain the uh, coordinates of our satellite. <clears throat> So we called such seven points in this particular case, or maybe n plus one point, the uh, interpolation pattern. And the main thing is just to fix mutual position of interpolation nodes and target point. Good. When we uh, fix T bar in our formula, in our general pre interpolation formula, then dependence on T hat is not essential then our functions become constants, which is much better, good. What is done next? <clears throat> we come to the following formula. When we fix the interpolation pattern, endpoints, interpolation node, and the target point, target time moment, t hat, we have the following same formula with unknown constant alpha i's. Now shift this pattern, the interpolation pattern, along the time axis. So. <clears throat> for some moment, with, uh, for the known SP3 trajectory, we take 
fast six points, then uh, shift 15 minutes and uh, take another six points, etc., etc., etc. So we obtain a system of equations. What is known in such a system? What is not known? First, we know f in nodes ti. We want to know f in t hat. And also we want to fix alphas. So what is done? <clears throat> at this stage, at the first stage of training our uh, interpolation formula, we want, we need to know in advance some set of model trajectories where we know the left-hand side positions. So we now uh, look at this number of equations as a system of equations for the unknown alpha, I, alpha i's where right-hand side f and left-hand side f are known. Then we solve them with least uh, squares methods. So we certainly have <clears throat> uh, some residues, some small epsilons, such that uh, the number of equation k is more than n, then certainly is system is overdetermined. We have a lot of positions of our satellites, a lot of solutions are known. <clears throat> so solving such an overdetermined system, we obtain alphas such that sum of squares of epsilons is as small as possible. So now the time comes for the second step using such alphas. So the first step, the training step, we did it and it uh, involves a pre-computed trajectories. In order to obtain alphas, we need to know the left-hand side. Suppose we have computed 100 or 1000 trajectories, which is easily, easily done using differential equations. We need to do this on the training stage. But as soon as we found such simple six alphas, for example, six or 10, not more, we go to the user stage and we don't need to know pre-computed trajectories. We only know to have six constant alphas and sp3 points obtained from uh, open uh, data of trajectories. Good. But uh, good, we fixed the uh, head, but we need to know different positions for different time moments. So what is dependent on this t-head? So we go, can go to the next step. We call it defrost t-head. What do we mean by defrosting t-head? <clears throat> for each particular position of t-head, with respect to our uh, interpolation node, we compute alphas. Then we shift t hat and again for, freeze it, we fix it, and again do the same procedure of training uh, our model using our known trajectories and known position of satellites and obtain another set of alphas. And here on the graph you see the uh, variation, the, the process of moving our t hat target point from the first to the sixth point. Anyway, in between alphas change, and by the way, precision is around 12 decimal digits in our experiments. So alphas are known with high precision. And they look quite similar to something we understand as smooth solutions. And in fact, they are solution of uh, the perturbation equation, but let's skip it and go to comparison. Uh, go to uh, basic steps of our algorithm again, Sum, summing up our approach. So, uh, free interpolation algorithm, as we do it, and we'll develop it further for the nonlinear interpolation, for multi-parametric interpolation, consists in two steps, which is very typical for machine learning <coughs> approach. First, choose interpolation pattern and the model of free interpolation. Model means that we will do it nonlinear with some additional terms. We do it multi-parametric on the next slides. Then uh, calculate training set of satellite trajectories using solving differential equations, certainly fitting uh, such trajectories to available SP3 points. And we are grateful to our colleague in, from Siberia, several, uh, Siberian Federal University, Yuri Yuri Chushakov, who did this. And it's a very serious work, but it's done. It's commonly known. <clears throat> well, after this, we train our set of uh, our 
model and find their known coefficients alpha. And we should find this set of coefficients for quite a few positions of our target time points. Uh, in our experiment, we took uh, one minute steps with t, with t hat. So instead of 15 minutes uh, in, standard, in standard input data, we obtain positions with step one minute on this training stage and have coefficients uh, for such training position. Then on the user stage, take this grid, calculate satellite coordinates at several points in such a uh, grid of t hat k, and use secondary usual Lagrange interpolation from the found points. Uh, what is the gain of this procedure if you still use some Lagrange interpolation? Because first, <clears throat> we need much less points from the input sp3 data. Second, the order Lagrange interpolation will be also quite low. It's enough to take four consecutive points with time step one minute instead of 10 points or even more for Lagrange interpolation with the time step 15 minutes. Let's compare accuracy of our approach and the standard Lagrange approach. Certainly, uh, we have some differences for our satellite uh, systems, for GPS and GLONASS. They are quite similar, but a bit different because trajectories are a bit different, right? <clears throat> In the Second column, you see the number of points in our interpolation patterns. And we see that for six points of, okay, for 10 points, if you take 10 consecutive points with 15 minutes time step, then already Lagrange interpolation gives precision better than one millimeter. Good, but what if you'll take not 10, but say eight points? Then precision obviously degrades and for six points, precision is dramatically insufficient, more than one meter, if we use Lagrange interpolation. But with our free interpolation approach, the same number of six points is enough to reduce the error, root mean square error, RMSE, uh, to three millimeters and a half for GPS and one millimeter is a bit more for GLONASS satellites. So we see that. With a simple approach, we gained more than 100 times better result, result than for standard Lagrange interpolation in the case of six points. Why six is important? Well, it's physically obvious. <coughs> Satellite trajectories certainly uh, are influenced by external forces, but also they are obviously six parametric in a sense, because the initial position three, three coordinates plus initial velocity on each uh, cycle is essential. So is in a sense, number of parameters in trajectories is six. So less than six parameters is not possible to take as input data to obtain a precise result. Good. <clears throat> is it possible to get, to move a bit further from such number six in necessary uh, positions of uh, 15 minutes uh, uh, grid uh, given by processing centers of uh, satellite navigation systems. Yes, it's possible because in fact, in our simple approach and the classical polynomial and trigonometric and other approach, we processes, process and we interpolate each coordinate x, y, and z separately. Why don't we mix them? In the standard interpolation approach, it's, it's a strange idea, but in our free interpolation approach, there is no problem. So <clears throat> the first move, the first idea realized is just try to use in our interpolation formula, all three coordinates, when you want to find any one of coordinates in your target point T, T hat. Good. Uh, well, precision a bit, mm, well, error a bit uh, smaller becomes, but not dramatically. But let's come with another idea. Why we take only linear combination of our input data, input points of satellite trajectories with 15 uh, minutes time step? Why don't we take, say, quadratic terms? 
So let's unite x of ti's, z of ti, oh, sorry, it's y of ti should be. So x, y, and z in the known points <clears throat> in one uh, set of coordinates and take quadratic terms. So all possible products of x's, y's, and z's in all possible positions ti, right? With some unknown coefficients. That's possible, no problem, formally. Is it possible to gain something in such an approach? Yes. This new, this nonlinear interpolation approach with free coefficients after training step and after testing of other trajectories turns out to, quite, to be quite successful. We can now reduce number of points n to much smaller values. Certainly, if we take two points, with all three coordinates, so still six parameters. So it's minimal number, obviously. If we have six parameters, so two points with x, y, and z coordinates, one point and another point, then it's possible to do nonlinear interpolation. And for degree one, for linear case, certainly we have only very, very bad precision, 200 and something meters for extrapolation forward and interpolation with t bar in the middle. For degree three, terms and degree four terms, precision is much better, but still not one, very far from being one millimeter. Well, why? Let's think about that. But another possibility is just to take instead of two, three points as input data in our formula. So take three consecutive uh, nodes of our interpolation pattern and instead of linear... Sorry, Sergey, yeah. Okay, we should make an interruption for uh, reloading Zoom. Okay, I will just talk Okay, for this table it's okay. So we see that for three points, for linear interpolation uh, precision is not uh, good. It's 44, almost 45 meters for extrapolation, one meter a bit more for interpolation. For degree three, situation is very good, three millimeters and, uh, and uh, almost five centimeters for extrapolation for, 15, for the next 15 minutes forward position. And for four points, we have perfect millimeter, uh, more than one tenth, uh, less than one tenth of millimeter precision for degree three, and even perfect four millimeter precision for extrapolation forward, 15 minutes forward. Okay, let's uh, switch to our Zoom. Okay, let's Zoom. Okay. So good. How can we get that? 